Hey hey, how's it going guys? My name is Eelwood and today we are looking at the brand new and long awaited Resident Evil 3, Capcom's remake attempt at the PS1 original that has been released on pretty much all platforms and to answer the ultimate question as always, is it worth your time? So, Resident Evil 3 is a single player action survivor horror game, set in where else but the infamous Raccoon City. You play as Jill Valentine, again set 24 hours before the events of Resident Evil 2, you'll be navigating the zombie infested streets, taking on an assortment of new and returning baddies, all while having the new and improved nemesis to keep you company throughout your entire playthrough. So aesthetically, for a start, the Resident Evil 3 remake, as with number 2, was also created using the still pretty new RE engine developed by Capcom. This means stunning aesthetics, incredible textures and brilliant character detail. Very high immersive quality that you should expect from a AAA title like this. Colours used are your classic dark and dull to maintain a very realistic look to the game as much as possible, ensuring a very serious horror feel throughout the entire game. Lighting effects are also very top quality with the various glow effects, ambient lighting and shadow effects, but I have to say, the way the lighting interacts with the many different textures in the game looks absolutely incredible, especially in either the darker or wetter areas. <laughs> Speaking of textures and detail, we're talking top of the range 3D models with loads of different texture designs, easily distinguishable environmental details like stones and metals, but some would say however they may have gone a bit overboard on the gloss effects, since some materials shine a bit too well for real life reference, and it must be a very warm night in Raccoon city because everyone seems to be sweating quite a bit. I personally don't mind it though and if anything makes the game even more aesthetically pleasing. I did however find the ground clutter was just a tad too much for my liking though, especially in the very built up areas like the city and its alleyways. But it is fortunately not crazy enough to actually get in the way so it's all good. The UI is perfect, pretty much non-existent exactly how I like it. I really don't like that they have now replaced the Resident Evil 2 current health pop up box after taking damage with a too subtle red glow effect around the screen like pretty much every other game does. Big shame there, they should have kept it the same as Resident Evil 2. Other screens though, like inventory, map and options are all basically the same as number 2, very clean and simple, easy to navigate and to understand. Level layouts feel much larger than those in number 2, which does make sense since you are outdoors a lot more often. When first starting off, it does feel like you have too many routes to take due to the very open areas being a bit too large, but thanks to the very simple, easy on the eye map design, you really realize it's not as bad as you first thought. Character and enemy designs are by far the game's greatest visual assets. Plot characters during dialogue have brilliant facial animations and very realistic gestures that are amongst some of the best I have ever seen. Enemies I feel are even better looking, especially with the larger creatures like the two hunter species and the nemesis himself, all of which have pretty much flawless animations, incredible textures and very impressive collision physics. But by far one of the best things about this game, the nemesis in his starting form comes fully equipped with a state of the art bigger version of my Halloween costume between the ages of 2 and 6, a fucking bin bag. But not just any bin bag, an umbrella certified full body fucking bin bag. Brilliant. The leather jacket was obviously a bit too 90s for Nemesis 2.0. But on a more serious note, Resident Evil 3 is definitely a standard setting triumph visually with a level of quality that is definitely undeniable. Right, the OSTs. So, for a start, when I first started playing the game and got to the save room, the moment I heard the save room OST, I knew within the first 5 seconds, Capcom wasn't going to give us a purchasable option to hear the original PS1 soundtracks. I then paused my game, went straight to Google, and you know what, I was exactly right. So they'll give us the option to purchase the original PS1 tracks for number 2, but they won't do it for number 3. How fucking stupid is that? But, putting this very crucial fact aside, the soundtracks that 
have been composed for the actual game are not bad, but not exactly exceptional. They've decided to go for a drawn out, ominous, quite flatline tension feel using mainly instrumental sounds with the occasional FX sounds here and there. Most of the new tracks don't have any kind of distinct main melody to speak of and instead just sound like easily forgotten, quite bold background music. This obviously doesn't apply to the very few tracks that they've attempted to remake since these include an actual main melody, but even these have unfortunately lost their crisp, distinct quality for a more subtle, less powerful modern edge, which as Capcom did with their newest Monster Hunter title didn't come close to even improving on the originals. The boss tracks however, like the Nemesis theme and other OSTs during times of urgency are not as bad, but again barely considered a shadow of the original game tracks brilliance. Everything else sound related however is absolutely brilliant with foreground sounds, distinct ambient sounds and character sounds being of the highest quality and provide a very consistent immersive experience. Voice acting is also brilliant when generally playing the game, but specifically cutscenes look and sound so good it's almost like watching a movie. A very big shame the soundtrack quality provided does not match the same standard set by the rest of the game's entirety. Now for the gameplay. So firstly, Resident Evil 3 does have a few difficulty options to choose from before you play. You can choose between assisted, standard or hardcore mode. The difference between each mode is clearly stated on the mode selection screen, so no guesswork required. I personally got through around 20% of the game on standard, but ended up completing it on hardcore because I missed a certain item that I didn't realise I couldn't go back for. The game does have other difficulty modes to choose from as well, but these do need to be unlocked by completing the game on the harder difficulties first. The lore of the game is fortunately pretty much identical to the original. You play as Jill Valentine, an ex-member of the Raccoon City Police Department Stars Force. She happens to be in the centre of the infamous Raccoon City during the zombie takeover and needs to find a way to escape. A creature known as the Nemesis also appears to have been deployed into the city with the task of collecting Dario Rosso's rare star sticker collection. But due to communication issues when receiving his instructions, he misinterprets these completely. I'm joking. Calm down guys, I'm fucking joking. He's actually been told to wipe out the remaining members of Stars, but no biggie. So once you've chosen your starting difficulty, you watch a pretty informative intro cutscene if you're unfamiliar with the series, take control of your character and play. You do initially start the game in first person, but don't panic like I did. This is fortunately a completely pointless detail that doesn't happen again past the first two minutes of gameplay, and is reverted back to third person indefinitely once you've passed the introduction. Character controls are pretty much identical to the RE2 remake, you have your standard movement as you'd expect, with the addition of aiming, firing and interacting. Specifically to 3 however, similar to the original PS1 release, you can now quick step. Quick stepping is used to perform an evasive manoeuvre to avoid any damage taken from any enemy. If pressed at the perfect time however, will result in a short invincibility roll that lets you avoid the damage you would have taken completely. This can be done both by pressing the quick step button, or like in the original game, drawing your weapon at the perfect time. I found this out way too late, but following the roll, if you aim immediately after, you will get a few seconds of slow motion and a nice auto aim on the target's head, which will allow you a free easy shot. The timing is a bit of a pain when you first start using it though, but after a bit of practice you pick it up quite easily. As with all Resident Evil games, the game is progressed normally by collecting keys, opening doors and solving puzzles, all while managing your limited inventory space and backtracking. The game also includes the expected good selection of weapons, the ability to upgrade them, create ammo, combine healing items and much more, all of which is all you will ever need. Puzzles in 3 however are quite non-existent, but fortunately this didn't affect the gameplay as much as I expected. The backtracking formula used is also pretty good too, but just a touch too little if anything, especially when considering the large amount of content they cut from the original PS1 release, which yes, did piss me right off. Luckily they still kept the Carlos gameplay from the original, and if anything I've actually improved upon it, so it's not as bad. Cutscenes and dialogue though, I have to be honest, do tell the story brilliantly and have been executed so well it does cause you to actually like the characters. Combat is obviously the best part of the game though, especially with the return of perfect rolling. Enemies are very good AI, swarm you easily and have more than enough attack animations to keep the immersion flowing. All enemies have specific weaknesses to certain weapons, when hit on certain parts of the body and with the nemesis about can be an absolute pain in the ass in groups. The nemesis specifically 
Ugly is by far the most noteworthy, coming in many different forms with many different methods of attack. They did however reimagine his aggressive humanoid tentacle form from the original and instead went for the blind abomination dog style. Fortunately though, if you are a fan of Ben 10, you'll definitely appreciate the new look that he's rocking. Or better yet, if you're an alien fan, you'll definitely like the last form, which sorry, I can't show without risk of spoilers. But regardless of his looks, the boss fights are quite unique and enjoyable, with mechanics that mix things up from the norm which were a pleasant surprise. The final boss specifically being very unique and surprisingly fun. Once you've completed the game for the first time, you will now have access to the shop, but unfortunately no mercenaries to speak of whatsoever. So for those of you that were waiting patiently for it for the last 15 years like myself, I'm fucking lucky. Capcom did however give us the resistance game with the purchase of Resident Evil 3, which unfortunately we're not going to touch on this video since it's a completely different fucking game. The shop however is used to purchase items for in-game use, to give you a bit of an edge on the harder difficulties. Items for sale include damage increasing coins, unlimited ammo weapons and alternative skins. Points are the currency used at the shop which are earned by completing challenges on the record screen like completing the game in under 2 hours and getting a certain amount of kills with a particular weapon. The best items however like the classic unlimited rocket launcher come at a very hefty price which I imagine will take some time to unlock. Overall quite a fun and enjoyable gameplay experience that did raise a lot of questions to the developers decisions. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? It's superb production quality, fun combat and immersive story provide a creepy, interesting yet expensive gaming experience that from the perspective of a serious fan would barely be considered a remake. I'm going to give this game a 4.5 star or 85 out of 100. The first person view at the start of the game did honestly make my heart sink due to thinking it was a first slash third person hybrid. The reimagined nemesis forms are initially quite funny but good regardless. Not as good as the originals in my opinion, but that's purely down to preference. I originally didn't like the reimagined look of the characters like Nikolai or Carlos, but that around halfway through the game they did grow on me very quickly. I don't mind that they've replaced the defensive actions from Resident Evil 2 with the much better evasive manoeuvres from the original. I find the fact you need to button bash when grabbed now is a completely unneeded feature that doesn't exactly enhance your gaming experience. I liked how Monster Hunter must have inspired Resident Evil 3 in some way due to the nemesis roaring on occasion and the fact they included hell versions of the Biotodas. And I tell you what, thank god the nemesis pulls out a rocket launcher by surprise while playing because the flamethrower only would have pissed me right off. On a more serious note, this is by far the most difficult game I've ever reviewed on the channel. The Resident Evil fan inside me tells me that Capcom fucked us over. They left out the entire park area, the entire clock town area, removed the worm boss from the original game completely, cut the first 40 minutes of the PS1 plot into the first 10 minutes of the remake, they didn't implement the option to purchase the original soundtrack like in number 2, made no attempts to replace or even mention the interactable cutscenes from the original, they removed mercenaries for a fucking game that I'll probably never ever play, and had a cheek to charge us £50 for this. They're taking a fucking piss. Resident Evil 2 I would consider a successful remake and not this 70% complete fucking rubbish. But then I sit here and I think, I'm not here to talk about potential, I'm here to talk about what we have available to us. And to answer a simple ultimate question. Regardless of what the fan inside me thinks, the game does indeed have high production quality, brilliant cutscenes, surprisingly fun boss fights and more. The £50 spend however is very, very hard to justify though considering the game definitely feels rushed, is way shorter than expected and has such heavily cut content from the original game. But I suppose the game does offer decent replayability, a fresh yet nostalgic gaming experience and provides pretty good consistent immersion throughout. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I should be reviewing each week. And remember guys, we are amidst a pandemic at the moment, so make sure you're touching elbows, staying positive and washing those fucking hands. Fingers crossed, this should all be over by August, the absolute latest. But as always, all the best guys, take care.